Welcome to a toast to the men. We have Wednesdays with Yaya, of course. Today's topic, the culture of not speaking, family dysfunction. Let's get into it. Get your glasses up, get your glasses up, a toast to the men. How are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing great. You're looking good. good. Yeah, I'm doing uh, great. You're looking good, looking beautiful, fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, so everyone, welcome. Wednesdays with Yaya, my beautiful, lovely wife, Yaya. I think it's been, what, a couple of weeks since we've been on? Three, three. Mm Mm-hmm, three weeks. Okay, all right. So this is an interesting topic, Um. The culture of not speaking, family dysfunction. And we've talked about this over a number of years about mm-hmm. family secrets, things that are not discussed, uh, things we just don't know. Uh, as simple as going to the doctor and your uh, your doctor or your PCP asking, are you allergic to anything? Uh, is, there, uh, is there anything that runs in your family? And, and for most of us, all we can really say is not to my knowledge. Right. Yeah, that's that's a problem because there's a disconnect. Uh, you don't know your, your your lineage. You don't know, you know, uh, who you're tied to, the bloodline. Mm-hmm. You don't really know, you know, what's in your DNA. And that's a huge issue. Um, so my thing is, what what causes that? Why do you think we don't discuss things? And I really can't speak on any other ethnicity or race, but I know for Black people, we don't talk about a lot of things. Yeah, we do a lot of, of, of closing doors and, and, and keeping quiet just to keep the peace. Mm-hmm. And you and I were talking earlier how you know, there's there's probably one or two family members that know the full history right. regarding health and the past. And if that person takes all that information to them, <clears throat> right. to the, I don't I don't I don't know why. Um but I, I really wish I had asked more questions. I know some of the health issues now, but I really wish I had asked more questions when I yeah. was younger. Yeah, I think I think most of us, uh, we don't ask questions, we wonder, but I don't think uh, it's encouraged to ask questions. I don't mm-hmm. think the, the environment uh, nurtures that to ask questions about certain things, even about certain people in the family. They'll just say, they might say, hey, don't be alone with Uncle X, Y, Z. Right, right, right. <laughs> but they won't go into detail why, why you shouldn't be alone, why the kids shouldn't be alone. Oh, with, my God. That, um, memory. Yes, yes. Yeah. And um, that that does us a disservice as a community, as a family, because some things could be running through our bloodline. And not only that, uh, transgressions, sexual transgressions uh, can happen and the child doesn't speak up because the the environment doesn't nurture that, doesn't encourage that to speak out. No, there's so so much secrecy and and, uh, that's an issue. That's an issue. You know, you know, uh, what, two years ago, I went to a family reunion on my dad's side. Mm-hmm. And I met a lot of people on that side. <clears throat> and I found, or I don't say I found out new information. I discovered a new perspective, a new point of view between uh, the dynamic between my dad and my mom. Right. Right. Uh, luckily, or fortunately for me as a child, I've just always been an objective person. So even as a child, I never, you know, took my mom's side or, or hated my father. I just, that's just how I'm born, I guess, uh, being objective and seeing the big picture. 
and not just going on emotion, not being driven by emotion about what somebody says, even if it's my mom, not just mm-hmm. driven by what she says and believing it, uh, understanding that's her, that may be her truth. And she may be leaving some things out. She's human. And so, uh, but a lot of people, a lot of uh, children are not like that, you know? So right. it causes discourse, uh, bitterness, and, uh, you know, a disconnect between uh, the, right. the father father and the, and the child a lot of times. Right. We end up bitter and we don't even have all of the information. You can't even explain the total reason that you are bitter. Right. Right. And I think I think um, subconsciously we're thinking or people are thinking, man, my mom has to be telling me the whole story. She wouldn't lie. Right. Right. And I spoke on that also before about putting your mom on a pedestal. And not really realizing, man, your, your mom is a female, is a human being at the end of the day. <laughs> right? She ain't perfect. She ain't perfect, man. And uh, that happens a lot. And I think sometimes... We, we have to go back to the age that our parents were when we were young. We don't think about... Right. <laughs> they were they were young and dumb a lot of times. My mother was at age 25, right? Right. Right. And, and and so that's a good point. And so people really need to think about, OK, my mom and dad were between 18 or 25 when they had me. What was I doing? What was my mindset at that age? Was exactly. I what was I damn fool? Exactly. <laughs> right. OK, your, your your parents are not immune to that foolery, you know. Right. right. right, right. You know, and we forget. They, they're human beings, you know, they're, they're imperfect human beings. We forget that. But uh, so much secrecy, like we was one, we were talking earlier, and there's so much we don't know about our grandparents and how, like, you can have a grandfather uh, that was married three times and had three sets of kids by these three women. And you don't know everything involved in that and what was happening, what was going on. Uh, or a woman has been married twice. And then this this last gentleman adopts the kids she has and the name changes. And so you might have a, a, a Duncan Dash Booker last name. Mm-hmm. And we never really know. And it's a lot of whispering, a lot of gossip at the family reunions. But that needs to be stated, like <laughs> what was going on and, uh, you know, how all this transpired in, in the family. Right. But, yeah, we keep a lot and of stuff know, secret. Even, the, true. You know, even when somebody passes and we have the obituary, we see all these different last names, mm-hmm. but don't ask any questions. Right. We even see people showing up at the funeral and we have no idea who this person is. Now, there's somebody in the family who knows. All right. But they keep it very quiet. Yeah. We, you know, I, I, yeah. I just really wish, I really wish I had asked so many questions because I remember seeing those obituaries and I'm like, why is this last name? Why do we have? all of these different last names and they, they're saying this person is um a daughter or right. a son right. of the yeah yeah and, and and it goes to like mental dysfunction in the family and you can't pinpoint it because sometimes the people don't have the information or they're keeping it to themselves but and then I think about uh interracial um, marriages or, or connections and where mixed race kids are created, it gets even more complicated with that, right? Because, man, now now you're going down a, a different tunnel, you know, and a lot of times, man, uh, a lot of times one side is disconnected 
are not so engaged in that child's life. You know, the families are not tight most of the time, most of the times when you have these interracial marriages, right? Um, and, you know, God forbid they get a divorce. I think there's a even bigger disconnect between the families because mm -hmm. now they don't have to really deal with each other. Exactly. And so, so much information is lost or untold, goes untold. Right. Uh, yeah, that's <clears throat> it's crazy. Um, and I think we do it to, to save face. I think we do it to save face. Uh, we don't want to talk about it. But then when you don't talk about it, you don't reveal these things. Right. Uh, they become more powerful and more toxic. And then that's where you start having generational so-called curses. Mm -hmm. Because, hey, we didn't deal with it. We brushed it under the rug, and we're not dealing with it. And it comes back to hunt, hunt us, even, even strong, being even stronger in later generations. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. how do we break it? How do we break the cycle? Because the person that usually wants to talk about it, you know, we got that aunt that wants to talk about it in every right, family, right. but she's labeled right. crazy. Right, right. We yeah, they try to. Oh, yeah, they want. try to put. They try to put a, a a muzzle on her, and she's labeled crazy. Right, they keep her in the back room. Right, <laughs> right, but she wants to tell everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how do we how do we break it? I don't know. I think I it, I think it's gonna just take one brave soul at a time. You know, it, it just takes one person going off the grid, uh, off the rails, and just telling the truth and being ostracized. Maybe men hate it, but hey, people are gonna be educated and set free. Mm -hmm. Right. So. See, I have I have an aunt that I know I know she has a lot of information, and I know you and I talked about it, and I told her that I wanted to sit down with her and get more um, knowledge of the family. But now, her Alzheimer's is so bad. Yeah. So, I, it's, it was a timely thing, something I should have jumped on as soon as I thought about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and. She may not, she's she's up in age. She may not have much longer uh, on this earth. And they say every time an elder elder dies, I believe it says a history book or, or an encyclo encyclopedia that dies with them. Yeah, so we, we really got to uh, be able to tell these stories. And not so much on a, on a YouTube platform. I'm just saying within your family. Family, right. You know, uh, that will kill a lot of dysfunction. Just communicating, uh, owning it, addressing it head on will kill a lot of stuff. You know, there's going to be some tough conversations people don't want to hear, but uh, you won't be shackled. That's uh, true. You won't be shackled anymore. You know, a lot of mental shackles, emotional shackles, spiritual shackles. And you wonder why every generation suffer some of the same things in your family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you start digging, you'll find out, you know, what's going on. Exactly. And you may be surprised, you know, uh, my aunt, one of my aunts uh, did some digging about uh, on my mom, I think on my grandmother's side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it had to be on my grandmother's side, I guess. Um, about our ancestors. Uh, and she got so far back to uh, close to the end of slavery. Uh, I guess he would be a great, 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 great uncle of Bush right. Taylor. She came up, found the name Bush Taylor. He had escaped from slavery. Uh, joined in with some Indians and uh, got with one of the women. Uh, she couldn't have children, so he had children with her sister. You know, uh, like these are stories 
Wow. <laughs> like, this, like, like, these are stories we need to know. Like, this is rich history. Right. Yeah. Yeah, this is rich history. You know, uh, so there's so many dynamics, there's so many layers in that story itself. Just that that little bit, there's so many layers, right? So you got a guy mm-hmm. who escaped, so he's a fighter. You know what I'm saying? He, uh, he didn't lay down and say, hey, I'm just going to suffer through slavery. He, he escaped. Um, got to be even a, either a convincing guy or a charismatic guy or some, a guy with skills for this tribe to take him in. Right? And wow. then, yeah, and then I guess he was even more convincing. His wife couldn't, <laughs> couldn't have children. The 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 uh, Native uh, American, I guess you would call it, uh, Indian woman he married uh, or connected with. So her sister agreed, and no, uh, uh, you know, this is back in eighteen hundreds. It ain't no, uh, <laughs> ain't no medical procedure. You really, <laughs> you really got to do the do, <laughs> right? <laughs> so wow. yeah, so you, you think about that alone. Uh, that's that's rich. And that's just a, a little bit she was able to come up with. Yeah. yeah. I'm just listening to you tell this story. This this imagine sitting around your family and the and the elders finding out more information. This is stuff we need to know. But think about it though. So think about it like, okay, so Bush Taylor dies, right? So it's believed that. The spirit is reincarnated. We come back. Mm-hmm. Right? You come back into the same bloodline. That's what it's believed by, by many. Um, so say you got a, a kid, a child, 100 years later, or 50 years later, that comes into the world. And he has the spirit of Bush Taylor. Mm. And we don't know why this guy is so, this kid is so rebellious and just got this fighter's mentality. There's no quitter mentality. We don't know. And so we try to tame it. Right, and right. We, we end up killing his spirit, the fighter in him. But he was meant to be something greater. But we right, didn't understand right. it. So we killed it. Right. Not physically, but, you know, mm-hmm. you can kill a person's spirit, right? Mm-hmm. But let's say if we had this rich information and we were connected to this information with the ancestors, with the people that came before us, and we can identify where that may come from. We'll treat it differently. Right. You know, we'll say this is this is Bush Taylor. From what we're reading, from, from what we read, this is the spirit of Bush Taylor. Right. And we would treat that young man differently. Right. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, I mean that's that's just uh that's heavy when you really think about it. You know, that's heavy. So wow. and, and you know, different tribes uh breed different things, man. Some tribes are more peaceful, docile, some tribes are warriors, some tribes are good with their hands, uh some tribes are good at uh, hunting and or planting, fielding. Uh and you're disconnected from all that. Mm-hmm. You don't understand. We don't understand why we think, why we, how we think. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So somebody, somebody said, I was reading something. Man, this is how, how cold it is, right? Somebody said, uh, I was reading something. And uh, they say the calendar is switched around. They say the calendar we use is switched around, right? Uh, they switched it around as far as the months. You know, uh, June should be where December is. So they switched the camera. They switched the calendar around. Okay. And so the time is off. You 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 disrupted the universe when you do that. The timing is off. And somebody said, so over in, uh, in, in Africa, a certain part of Africa, mm-hmm. they have the calendar supposedly the way it should be. They don't go by our calendar. Okay. It's, it's upside down. 
It's the other way around, I guess. Some part in Africa. Uh, and someone said, so this is why black people are always late. <laughs> <laughs> but somebody said, well, actually, this is, we're actually on time. <laughs> right? Right. These things right. have been switched around. It just, it was funny, but it gives you a different perspective. Exactly. Like, wow. But there's so much information that we don't know. And I know I'm digging outside of the family structure, but I just wanted to, wanted to highlight how huge it is to communicate and pass things on mm -hmm. and uh, open your mouth. You know, just about the bad things, the ugly things uh, right. that have, that have uh, occurred occurred uh, in the family, in the world, in the community, uh, but also the, the good things. Right. 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 Some of us are out here dealing with, with issues on a daily basis, you know, and we don't know if there's, there are a few ancestors out there that are here to protect us. All right. But we don't know who that person is. We don't know who we're, who we're waking up. We may be waking up the one that's the, the wrong one. We just right. need to right. it's just when you think about it. So a lot of the issues that we're dealing with on a daily basis, we have the help. Right. Yeah, we I'm have the help, help of the ancestors, ancestors, but we're disconnected. Right. You know what I'm saying? We're disconnected. And so, like you said, we don't even know who to call on. Right. Right. But uh, there's no better time than to start uh, than today. No better time to start than today. So, you know, we can we can uh, complain or harp on uh, what happened in the past. But we got to start today. Like today, mm -hmm. everyone has to take it upon themselves to document information and to tell the truth. You know, right. uh, you know, you may have different point of views and perspectives, but it's each is each of our own truth. And so uh, right. we gotta do that. But and, you know, for a couple of months you have you have um made me rethink some things, you know, regarding some family members, you know, you would tell me, don't, don't be so hard on this person. Don't be so hard on that person. And so mm -hmm. now, you, you know, it just makes me, you know, it takes me back to that person. And I'm like, you know, let me just, let me just rethink this. Don't be so hard on this person based on something that a family member told me. Let me, let me, uh, you know, come up with my own perspective. Right, right. And, and you got to understand, uh, and that goes back to what I was saying, you can't be easily moved by someone's point of view. I don't care if it's your mother or your father. Right. Listen, these people are human beings. They're not perfect. Uh, they are uh, capable of lying or having a skewed uh, view. Or it may be their, their truth, and they may be sincere, but it's just their point of view. And you mm -hmm. haven't spoken to everyone involved. Right. If you speak to everyone involved, I guarantee your point of view on it is going to change. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yeah, like the whole thing, like getting angry with people, you know, it's kind of like, don't, yeah, don't, this isn't, this isn't a battle or war, you know, between yeah. flesh and bones. Mm -hmm. it's spiritual is it's spiritual is about principalities. Right. Oh, that's what it's really about. But we get so emotional and angry with the person. We can't see, you know, the spirit. Like they may be fighting with something. I might be fighting with something mm -hmm. within me. Uh, and so uh, we get mad at the flesh, the person. We got to look beyond right. that. Yeah, yeah. You got to look beyond that and pull away from that, the emotion. Right. Yeah. And it's not easy. But the more you do it, the easier it, it becomes. At all. Yeah. But so yeah. You, you would notice when I'm when I would speak on certain certain people whose you know whose name I would uh 
you know, I, I, I would rate this person as the as the as the the better person. And then this other person would be the bad guy. Yeah, the protagonist and the antagonist. But and that's why that's why I love movies, like movies so much and books. Uh because just in life, books and movies are a reflection of real life. And so you got a protagonist, you got an antagonist or a hero or a villain, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is what's so cool to me. When you start digging deep uh, into who you believe is an antagonist, right? You start digging deep and you start learning why they became the way they became. Right. You start having compassion for them, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you dig, like we take Batman, when you start digging deep into why the Joker or the Penguin were the way they were, when you start going back, pulling back those layers into their childhood, right? You start having compassion <clears throat> and you start, you, st <laughs> you start to look at the Penguin and the Joker in different ways. <laughs> and that's true. Yeah. Yeah, but then when you look at who you who you uh, has deemed as the protagonist, the good guy, the hero, and then you, if you dig deeper, oh, you start seeing some dirt. You know, everything is not what you think, right? And you and mm -hmm. so it starts balancing out, and and you you uh, take the protagonist off, you know, say off the pedestal, off the pedestal, right? Right, and you bring. The antagonist out of hell, where you placed him. Yeah. And it's a more balanced view. Mm -hmm. Like, not saying you agree with the villain, with the antagonist, but you can uh, have compassion and you understand. Right. You have a different view. You have mm -hmm. a different view. And that's how life works. Uh, people get mad and angry and hate people on the surface because of something they did or said. Mm -hmm. But when you go deeper, you know, you got to, you got to, when you go deeper, you got to say to yourself, man, like, uh, if I, if I had experienced what they experienced, how would I have turned out? Right. Right. So you stop judging and you have compassion, mm -hmm. you know, and that's not to say you don't have discernment and, and, and not have distaste or dislike for what they're doing, their actions but you start having compassion for the person. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds so simple, huh? It, it does. And I just, I really, if, if I could just take life and, and undo and redo some things, I would definitely start there. We're having more compassion with, with, you know, certain people. Yeah. I mean, because the thing is, we judge. We judge a lot. And uh, the people, the people uh, who uh, judge the most uh, hate being judged. <laughs> like they mm -hmm. hate being judged. Yeah, the people yeah. that judge the most right. hate being judged. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I, you notice that. Like I've known some people. Listen, I know this, I don't even know this person, but I've seen it several times when people have attacked me in the comments, mm -hmm. on different comments I made. Now, I've never cursed anyone out. I've never threatened anyone. I've never called anyone out or name anything in my comments. But I've gotten that. I've received that, right? right. And then people have been real judgmental on different, different things, right? Mm -hmm. Like going hard. And then I'm like, after a while, I'm like, man, let me check out this person's profile. And I, oh, I get it. I get it. This person, this person, I know this person has been judged harshly mm -hmm. in their life. And I won't go into detail about what I see most of the time. Right. But I get it. I get why this person judges other people so harshly mm -hmm. because they have been judged harshly. Right. Right. It's like, wow, man. It's like, and I could have the perspective like, come on, no, you not judge. Right. <laughs> exactly. I could have that perspective, but 
then I will be judging. Right. So right. I just try to have discernment and understand and have compassion. OK, this this is probably how they got to this point. Right. Because we, we after we after we research it, we, we figure out, oh, they're already dealing with something. Oh, yeah. On the yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're dealing with something. Um, you don't need my negative comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it'd be, it'd be some crazy stuff going on. And you mm -hmm. just like, you just gotta, you just gotta shake your head and, uh, you know, have compassion and don't get caught up. Exactly. Yeah, don't focus on the, the, the individual, the flesh. Just know, man, they're dealing with something inside, spiritually. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that is what it is. So, anything you wanna add? No, I mean, this, this, this conversation has just really taken me to a place, you know, even prior to, to the Zoom, you know, the conversation we had earlier, it just had me, it just took me to a place where I wish I could just redo and undo some things. Right. right. But I guess it's, it's, it's never too late to, to realize and understand and get that compassion. So. No doubt. No doubt. Hey, it starts this moment. That's mm -hmm. all we have is, is right now. Right. And um, hey, like I said, if uh, we don't get it right, hey, hopefully we come back, get another another swing at the ball. <laughs> you yep, know? Yep. So we'll get it right. We'll figure it out eventually. Right. But uh, I'm trying to come back with uh, as few lessons. <laughs> I got to be, I got to oh. learn as possible. <laughs> yeah. Right. I got to elevate. So, yeah. Hey, as always, from me to you, from us to you, love, peace.